Today's video is sponsored by Factor. Fellas, do you like food? Healthy food? Real homemade delicious meal? Well then, you'll love Factor. I can't even tell you how many times I've been in the middle of gaming and ordered unhealthy fast food to my house. Nothing against Chipotle, but it's not good for you. Not only do I have to wait half an hour to eat it, but by the time it arrives, it's no longer even fresh. Factor solves all those problems though, with ready-made meals delivered right to your door. The food is always fresh and never frozen. They take two minutes to make, and there's no meal prep or cleanup. That's the same amount of time it takes to microwave a cup of ramen. But for actually nutritious meals. Whether you need only four meals a week or several meals each day, Factor is flexible with your schedule. You can choose between over 27 meals and 34 additional options that update weekly. So whatever your diet or preference, Factor has a meal just for you. Guys, I cannot recommend Factor enough. And if you're interested, use our link down below at go.factor75.com and use code POGAZTEC60 for 60% off on your first box. Guys, that is 60% off. Again, code POGAZTEC60. Thank you again for Factor for sponsoring today's video and fellas eat clean. Fellas in front of us today is a rapid fire pulse rifle that I never thought would actually be meta. Now here's the thing. There's a lot of contributing factors to why this rapid fire pulse rifle is so good. Number one, it's random rolls. Jurassic Green this year has a host of new rolls that are fantastic on this weapon. Number two, the new version of Jurassic Green that is dropping from Festival of the Lost also comes with the origin trait search party. Where the weapon is actually granted faster aim down sight speed and movement speed while while aiming down sights when no allies are nearby. And this is actually a 15 meter radius, but as long as you are 15 meters away from your enemies or just inside of things like Rumble, Search Party is active. And here recently, that's a big deal because all of our stats have greater effect on our weapons, including the likes of high impacts that have low handling. Rapid fire frames also have low handling on top of that. So you can imagine that these weapons feel much slower in the handling department, which is where Search Party comes in and really adds that fluidity there that makes Jurassic Green feel a lot better. With that being said, let's go through a number of different roles today that are present on this pulse rifle and go over which one you should be locking in. First up, being a rapid fire pulse rifle, TTK wise across the board, you'll be looking at around 0.8 seconds, which is actually really good. There's a seven crits, two body, body shot TTK wise is 1.4 seconds. And when we talk about like the best rapid fires in the game, you've got Horus Lease, which is dropping as an adept version. You've got Darkest Before, Peace of Mind, which is a force to be reckoned with, considering Peace of Mind comes with enhanced perks. But Peace of Mind actually got its base zoomed reduced from 19 to 18. Jurassic Green does have a base zoom 17, so it's actually still less than that of Peace of Mind. However, it's still able to compete as Peace of Mind having that zoom knocked down just slightly puts it in line with the rest of our other rapid fire pulse rifles. Now, what makes this archetype so good is obviously its dueling capabilities. The sheer amount of shots that are coming out absolutely destroys enemies in those 1v1 moments because you just get overwhelmed with the amount of shots that are hitting you in the face. Now, when we do actual side by side comparison with a host of other pulse rifles, including Grid Skipper, Time One Spire, Peace of Mind, Horus Lease, Darkest Before. What you notice across the board is Jurassic Green really does come under all of these weapons stat-wise. There's a little bit more airborne effectiveness in comparison to some of these other weapons, but just about every single one of them not only have more zoom, but more range, more stability, better handling, and these are the kind of stats that matter so much more now since update 6.2.5. So keep that in mind. Even though we have Search Party that's really mitigating some of those issues, especially in the handling department, under understand these weapons are superior stat wise. Now when we actually break down all the damage perks that are found on this weapon, again, 24 damage per crit, 15 per body is what you're able to achieve here with this rapid fire frame. But if you notice, we have things like Golden Tricorn. I know TV actually has a video on Golden Tricorn where he's combining things like Arthur's Embrace, Weighted Knives, essentially getting a weapon kill. A single stack of that increases our damage to 28 per crit and 17 per body. And a weapon plus ability kill substantially increases it from 36 per crit to 22 per body. We're talking a 50% increase there in damage, guys. TTK wise, you're actually looking at somewhere around a 0.33 second time to kill value. It's very, very good. However, you do have to jump through some hoops, and we actually play with this build. It is doable, especially this build right here, which actually synergized very, very well. But it is tougher to achieve. Granted, we were able to also achieve this time to kill value on Horus Lease with Kill Clip, but we had to combine Kill Clip with Radiance. And this actually allowed us to reach that 0.33 second time to kill value, which had a different level of activation, right? The reason why that was easy is because you could instant reload on your hunter with marksman dodge after getting a kill which were probably kill clip and radiance if on solo 3.0 pros and cons to both of these golden tricorn in this build is a very unique build and we've never looked at golden tricorn as a pvp park and i think for 6v6 golden tricorn is really really fun or even game modes like rumble and things like trials though in 3v3 game modes i don't necessarily know if i would go with it simply because i'm looking for a dueling perk and the thing about kill clip that's so nice is that even though it's not that 50 
50% buff that you get from Golden Tricorn with that weapon plus ability kill, it's still a sizable damage buff. Now, speaking of other damage perks, we also have Multi Kill Clip. Now, Multi Kill Clip can essentially do the same thing that Golden Tricorn does, but it's actually even harder to proc three stacks of Multi Kill Clip. At one stack, it goes to 28 damage per crit and 17 per body. Two stacks is 32 per crit, 19 per body. And three stacks is 36 damage per crit and 22 per body. Essentially allowing you to reach that 50% damage buff, enabling you to easily get that two burst. And again, when I say enabling you to get that easy two burst, understand five crits, one body is all that's necessary to kill a guardian, even max resilience guardians with golden tricorn weapon plus ability kill or multi kill clip at three stacks. Granted, very hard to achieve multi kill clip times three inside of PvP. Now, the other damage perk is adrenaline junkie. Two ways to proc adrenaline junkie, obviously, getting five kills each stack, starting at 6.6%, amping all the way up to 33%. You can also get this by getting a single grenade kill, which would just grant you 33% more damage. This cranks up our damage, similar to that of kill clip at 32 damage per crit and 19 per body. Frenzy is also present on here, amplifying our damage to 28 damage per crit and 17 per body. And the other damage perk is actually gut shot straight, which is 16 damage per body. So that's an elevation by plus one. Keep in mind though, gut shot straight guys, at least the base version of this perk is just not worth the decrease there in target acquisition. It's a drop off. It's noticeable. It does not feel good. Now, even though we're really getting hung up here on damage perks, that's not the say all end all. Because even though nobody likes to use this inside of PVP, I love incandescent, especially if you're rocking solo 3.0 and you're applying scorch. Guys, this is such a good trait. Dude, I love incandescent so much. I use it on my mind bender. I even use it on drink. And I know frostbolt, Datto, they thought I was smoking crack last week using mind benders with incandescent. But guys, it works. Okay. I'm not saying go out of your way to use an incandescent roll inside of PVP, but I was rocking a range finder incandescent roll and it felt really good. Now keep in mind for those that do have range finder rolls. Range finder is going to get nerfed. It was supposed to be nerfed in 6.2.5. It did not receive the nerf, but we do know it is coming. So with that in mind, I do want you to explore other options. Perpetual motion should be the obvious go-to choice here. That increase of stability, handling, and reload, even at one stack is really nice. And at two stacks, it's even better. Outside of that, you have things like killing wind, steady hands, both of which are really good. And the limiting factor for this pulse rifle is going to be that range. Grid skipper outranges it. Peace of mind outranges it. And the base stats and the likes of Horace Lease is superior to it, as well as even darkest before. So it's kind of an uphill battle here, which is why range finder is really, really nice on it. But granted, it's going to get nerfed, which is why I would actually lean into this weapon being a more 1v1 oriented weapon or a more dueling based weapon. And it actually does fantastic in things like rumble, even with builds with golden tricorn, chaining kill to kill, enemy to enemy, because they're rolling at you back to back. The god roll for me, and I'm going to give you the PvE god roll and the PvP roll. This weapon does not have good recoil direction, but even if you were to slap on arrowhead break, that's not the say all in all. You're still going to be looking at 80 recoil direction. Guys, you're going to want to rock a counterbalance mod, whatever the case may be. You can stack on the likes of extended barrel, but understand that does hurt that handling. And I don't really suggest that. That minus 10 there in handling substantially drops you down to dangerous territory, and that starts to become noticeable. Even with the likes of search party enhancing the weapon's ADS speed, everything else is going to feel very sluggish. I think things like small bore, hammer forge rifling if you want to commit there to range, and at the most, chambered compensator if you're looking to enhance the stability and the recoil direction without hurting your handling too much. But even throwing on something like small bore, which actually gives you those bumps there in both range and stability, is going to make the weapon feel really, really good. Magazine perk wise, I think high caliber rounds is the way to go. Look, it's the perk that made Clever Dragon what it was. Having that extra flinch is really nice here. First trade I would actually choose would be Perpetual Motion combined with Golden Tricorn for chaining those kills, especially if you're rocking a build that can utilize grenade or melee based kills very easily. Arthur's Embrace is still a fantastic one for that. Outside of that, you do have things like Multi Kill Clip, which does synergize nicely there with Perpetual Motion. And if you want to be weird, Incandescent, okay? Just don't hate on it. I like it. Obviously, Golden Tricorn is the go-to choice here in terms of damage. And if you can find yourself synergizing builds that can take advantage of Golden Tricorn, that is by far the best damage perk here amongst everything else. Incandescent is just really nice for enemies that like to stand close to each other. And if you like Kabloomies, for PvE though, Subsistence Incandescent all day long. Guys, that is the go-to choice there. I want that roll. You compare that with like a map perk, like a pendant mag. I know we have the BXR that can roll with like Enhanced Incandescent, and you can bring that inside of PvE, but Jurassic Green is another good option there for folks wanting an incandescent pulse rifle. Overall, guys, Jurassic Green possesses lethality that can carry you up to about 35 meters of range. It has the ability to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with other pulse rifles and even other weapons in this meta. But in the grand scheme of things, in regards to rapid fire pulse rifles and what is the best, peace of mind, Horace Lease Adept is still superior to me. They just went out in duels. And it really just comes down to the stats, guys. A range finder raw on Jurassic Green does 
does allow this pulse rifle to reach up to 38 meters and even past that point. But with the nerf coming to rangefinder, it's really hard for us to recommend it until we're actually playing with it in its nerfed form. But Hars Lease can reach up to 37 meters without rangefinder. And Peace of Mind goes up to 38 and a half meters without rangefinder. So the point is, is that both of those pulse rifles are positioned well once rangefinder is dealt with. Until then though, I think having rangefinder on Jurassic Green is completely fine. I do think Perpetual Motion makes the weapon feel a lot better as it makes up for that lack of handling for this archetype. And as we've seen there from across the board, this weapon does have substantially less handling and stability in comparison to these other rapid fires. So with that being said, try it out for yourselves. Jurassic Green, aka Lincoln Green, is still a force to be reckoned with. Well, fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.